The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading for the week. When we take a look at things on a daily basis, just chopping around near the recent highs. We've been here for about six weeks, folks. April 3rd is when we accelerate to a high of about 41.57 this morning. When I woke up, we were trading at about 41.57. I said, that's pretty interesting. Six weeks, we've been chopping around at these levels. We come into retail sales tomorrow. Excuse me, we have some earnings to follow this week. Uh, we get some of the retail earnings in particular. We get some of the Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Target. I think maybe some of them circle into next week, but we're talking about retail. We're past the tech earnings. And this morning, back to a five-minute chart. You talk about an acceleration, man. Friday... Absolutely remarkable. We basically get it all back in the overnight session, right? You're talking about a price point of 41.55. You trade down a full percent. We finish out the session at about 41.38. And just like that, folks, you were up to a high, as I mentioned, 41.56, which is basically right where we sold off yesterday. But talking about on the program, you can make money two ways in this market right now, depending on how you're trading it, where you have your stops, and your money management because we're getting some rip roaring rallies in both directions we saw it last week we'll see if we see it again this morning um and why not let's kick things off with a little bit of fed speak and we got some fed speakers today i'll talk about that later in the program as well but you have uh atlanta fed president rafael bostic out there today saying just reasonable stuff folks i reiterate it because you better believe it he does not foresee rate cuts at least through this year even if a widely forecast recession hits well into 2024, I believe was the quote that he had in there that I was reading earlier. If there's going to be a bias to action, for me, it would be a bias to increase a little further as opposed to a cut. You're going to hear some of this rhetoric because no matter what is going on, okay, we got two months until the next meeting. Not quite two months, but we got two months of data until the next meeting, as in we're going to get all the April data. Um, that we're getting right now that the Fed didn't have. We're going to get all the May data as well, and we'll see where we go from there. But, yeah, inflation is job number one. We've got to get back to our target. I imagine that's how Chairman Powell feels, folks, so hang on to that. No matter what the market's doing, pay attention to the numbers as they're going to be coming in. And, yeah, we'll see where they come for sure. All right, let's jump to some a little bit of big picture cash on the sidelines, we'll call it. Investors are nervous, and that could support stocks. This is a journal article out over the weekend. Yeah, I read it yesterday. Fund managers have lowest exposure to stocks relative to bonds since 2009. Yeah, and some of these stats, man, I mean, we're somewhat aware of it, okay, if you're in the market, if you're just aware of money market funds, the money that's going into some of those money market funds. But when you take a look at some of these numbers, institutions have piled a net 333 Billion dollars from stocks over the past 12 months, according to S&P Global Market Intelligence. Individual investors have yanked another $28 billion. Total assets in money markets, $5.3 trillion. So, man, there is a case to be made. And there it is right there. And compared to where we were in 2008, what's going to be so interesting, I find, okay, is that when the money market funds start going down. So not, I don't imagine that people are going to jump back into stocks when they're still getting a money market return of 4%, 5%, right? But what happens when that money market starts dwindling and the Fed does start cutting? But that's not happening just yet. But that money is going to be there on the sidelines, man. And boy, once they start cutting and that free money goes away, that's when the tides may shift in pretty dramatic fashion. As they say, you've got all this money on the sidelines. In our view, when bearishness is that universal, it's historically always been a great time to look for opportunities. True, except for the fact, it's always nice when you add a but, right? But we have been living in a society that there's been no risk-free rate of return for an extended period of time. 
And I think people, in light of the volatility that we're facing right now, really enjoy a nice risk-free rate of turn of return of four to five percent. Really, you're talking about five percent almost right now on CDs. As long as that is there, because you got to go out extended period of times, folks. You, ex, extended period of time, as in, you know, you look at five percent, folks. You can get a five-year ladder CD right now that puts you close to five percent. Well, geez, that's a 25% return over the next five years, risk-free. That is very attractive with the volatility we're facing, with generational inflation going on, okay, that could stress markets for a recession going forward. So I don't imagine this number moving until we get the Fed cutting, and that's where there's going to be interesting to see how long it takes them to cut. But boy, when they start cutting, and this is why this it's not going to be a disaster no matter what, folks. The Fed is going to get inflation under control because now they have the ammunition to cut. And when they do cut and they cut drastically and they reduce interest rates for everybody, this money is going to have to go somewhere besides money markets because money markets, it's going to be doing nothing. And you're going to have trillions of dollars. Pretty remarkable that we were even at two point six trillion. Right. But what's that mean? That means you got almost three trillion dollars that plowed into this since yeah i call it 2.5 trillion since the beginning of 2018 with things I mean, look at how things ratcheted up though even in 2019 yeah and then of course things through the roof during the pandemic pretty remarkable when you look at it though that even prior to the pandemic we were at 3.6 trillion what was the interest rate then practically nothing right then they plowed it into $4.7 trillion when it was really nothing. But guess what? People wanted cash. That's all they wanted. So actually pretty interesting when you look at since the interest rates have really started spiking higher, you're only talking about really a trillion dollars that's been in there over that time. A trillion dollars sounds like a lot, but is it a lot when you're talking about the shift since the end of 2020 when interest rates were basically at zero? Yeah, that's an interesting twist on that. On that chart, right? When you take a look at what the influence has actually been as rates have skyrocketed. I'm going to back this up even a little bit further to get where that chart was to, to kind of showcase. Yeah, you came in December of 2020, right? The 10 year was trading at 138, almost at zero, right? Basically, that's where we were, close to the zero bound as we had negative rates across the globe, but US had positive. But look at that, since you've had the 10 year, go from 138 to 115. That was in December of 2020. And actually you back it up. We were already at 4.3 trillion at that time. So the lure of real interest rates, okay? And again, these are money market fund assets, is really only a trillion dollars. So people who are conscious to that might not be as much uh, sitting there as, as you may expect, because think about what the market was doing, right? Pretty remarkable why this, where this is going. May, June of 2017, things started ratcheting up. Nonetheless, that's a lot of cash on the sidelines, man, and it will get used for something, so it will be a buffer for sure. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We'll take a look at some of those equities coming out with their numbers. We'll take a look at the markets. We get the S&P. Up by six points right now, dropping off a bit since the highs at about 8 a.m. Stay tuned, folks. It's Monday Trading. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P up about seven points right now, trading at 41.55. And as I had mentioned, right, you pull this thing up on a daily, folks, 4,200, quite an area of resistance on many accords. And it is interesting. I'm talking about on the program, you back things up on a weekly, you back it up to March of 2022. That was the first area of support where the Fed began hiking. We accelerate higher to above 4,600. And then in the span of about three months, you traded down about 1,000 S&P points. We're back to the 4,200 range. We're trading at 41.45 right now. And let's jump around to some of the other articles that I got pulled up here in terms of what we're talking about. Let's talk about Morgan Stanley's Wilson. We talk about them occasionally, man, the debt ceiling. So we have a meeting going on tomorrow. And then you have President Biden, I believe, going over is it to Japan for the G7. I don't know how it's going to end. A default would be pretty catastrophic. So I don't anticipate that would happen because if it happens markets would react to a way that would probably force the politicians to get their act together. But it's difficult to have too much optimism when you see how divisive politics can get right now. And it's only going to take a few people to really stall everything from going forward. Investors expect short-term volatility from the negotiations. Um, he's talking about bearish on corpor corporate profits and the macro outlook. And yeah, we'll see if the debt ceiling goes, man. It's May 15th right now, folks. Biden's going to Japan. Uh, and we're starting to get some of the trickle out of the news in terms of what's debatable, what's on the table, what's not on the table. And uh, we're going to get to find out. And no matter what, it's going to provide a little bit of volatility, man, because the most interesting part about this is that you look at where things were in 2011 and you had Boehner was able to negotiate for his caucus. And I don't know how McCarthy is in there negotiating when really he probably has to go back each and every night to find out what he's negotiating, if it works, if it doesn't, if he has the votes. And I don't know how that happens, man. It's a tough one going forward. Excuse me. Okay. Let's jump around to some of the other articles we got going on. Some of the equities, I should say, that are moving. So Shake Shack, they're going to have a little activist investor as they have um, engaged capital, planning a proxy fight for three board seats at the company. And the market usually likes that sometimes as you get a little bit of fresh blood ingested there. You jump over to Charles Schwab. And they are higher this morning, as Raymond James said in a note today, that Schwab's core banking business will remain strong, which could help the stock gain as much as 30 percent on Friday. Schwab was out there. You see the acceleration on Friday from 48 to 49. 
um, that they saw client assets increase 1% from March to April to $7.63 billion. And yeah, this thing has paid the price since the banking crisis began. Pretty remarkable. From 75 down to 48 you were just at 86 bucks to start off the year. You back it up on a three-year weekly, you were at 96 Pretty remarkable. Now, the one thing I'll say, just even looking at this chart, now, Schwab, of course, owns TD Ameritrade, folks, which owns Think or Swim. They are a sponsor, okay? But I don't imagine they're going anywhere. And they're not the case of a Silicon Valley bank or something like that. And maybe this is the completion of the A to B, C to D on a way down. Because look at this. You got an A to B leg of 96 down to 60. You're talking about $36. We were at 86 bucks to kick off this year. An A to B, C to D brings you down to about $50. That's a $36 leg again. And let's see what kind of a retracement we had. Maybe a 786 popping back up. Yeah, just above the 618 realistically. And then you trade lower by another 36 bucks. You back this up on a longer term basis. Look at that, right? Back to the highs of 1999. Absolutely remarkable, man. Some of the movements. All right, let's take a look at some of the other equities. We take a look at Amazon. Put it back to a shorter time frame chart. Amazon up to 110.88, quite the acceleration last week. We check in on Google. So Google had their AI conference last week. On Wednesday, you accelerate higher. You finish that acceleration up to 118. You're trading at 116. I think they got a downgrade from somebody, Google, this morning talking about, hey, guess what? It's going to be a tough go around as they proceed to go forward in the search arena and how AI changes everything. And that's a big picture. You solve that one big picture, folks, you will make a lot of money. Now, let's just back this up and see where we are on a, whoops, excuse me. We're going to add a drawing here. I want to see what kind of a retracement we're talking about to the upside from these lows that it made around 87 bucks. Yeah, we're coming into about the 50% retracement, which is pretty much the consolidation area you had last year as well. Google spiking to 117.92. We're down a bit, down about, what, a dollar, dollar fifty, as I mentioned. I think they got a little bit of a downgrade. So they're negative on a day the market's positive. If they could somehow split off YouTube, I'd buy YouTube, folks, because YouTube's not going away, man. I'm going to pull up some of those streaming t statistics later in this program. I got to talk about them again because the market share that Google is stealing from everybody else in terms of time spent watching TV is absolutely remarkable. I, uh, I'm not even going to guess the numbers because it was I was talking about it last week. I'm going to find them again because YouTube is now ahead of Netflix in terms of the percentage of time spent watching TV. And that wasn't the case six months ago. And they're just leaping above it. And uh, so if I could invest in YouTube, I would. If I could invest in Google search function, I would not. Because they have a monopoly. They've had a monopoly for 20 years. They're priced appropriately for having a monopoly for 20 years. You see the slide that they've had recently, even from August, right? At 122, almost getting a 30, 40% pullback to 84 bucks. I'm not sure the market's ready to reprice a an equity that's about to lose a monopoly in the search function, folks. And they're going to be around, man, okay? Google's going to be around, but they have a monopoly. So they are going to be around. They're going to be a huge player in search forever because how do you catch up with these AI firms, right? 60 Minutes did a story on Google a few weeks ago. And if you see these server farms they have, whew, um, I don't know how you compete. You're going to have AI running everything and you're going to need to be a company the size of microsoft apple or google to have the functionality and the computing power to run ai systems that are going to be running everything that big picture is pretty intimidating when you think about it but nonetheless that's the reality man so they'll be around because they've spent the money on ai they're going to have the computing power for ai but they're not going to be a monopoly, and I can't believe that they've contained 90% of the search going on 20-plus years when it is so crucial to everything involved in the Internet. Yeah. I had an article pulled up. Let's see if I can find it. Is that the one? I had a few articles. I was up early this morning reading a bunch. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit of food. We're going to talk a little bit of chocolate milk when we come back after the break, man. Because it is pretty interesting. We'll do a little bit of health because we're all sitting in front of our computers, folks, Americans, even internationally, no matter where you are, right? The, the trend is less activity and, unfortunately, snacking more. Not the not a good uh, recipe for the long term. Yeah, this is an interesting one as we come into the opening bell here. So, Tiger, speaking of other Tigers, Tiger Global Management seeking to offload hundreds of millions of dollars worth of private companies into the secondary market. 
they're lightening the balance sheet, man. And boy, they got some losses. So the vast majority of assets at Chase Coleman, and he's always up there making the most of those hedge fund managers, billions every year. They managed $51 billion at the beginning of the year, and most of it's in startups. They've hired an advisor to explore options to sell a portion of that. Seems like the losses, man. They're going to tighten things up. Like many of its peers, one of the worst challenging periods of the venture, they marked down its venture investments by about 33% last year, resulting in a $23 billion decline in value. And here's the thing. They're the ones marking those down, okay? So they're not crushing themselves. They're just being as reasonable as they can, providing pro formers going forward, taking a hit where they need to. $23 billion. And guess what? They're still offloading uh, some of those investments. Stay tuned, folks. Markets in the positive. Coming back for the opening bell. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open. You have the S&P up by three points right now. NASDAQ 100 barely in the positive by nine. Dow up by 16. Russell up by five. We jump around to a little currency action. Dollar spiking to 102.75 on Friday's action. We're backing off a bit at 102.48 right now. You jump over to yields. You got the 10-year right now, negative by eight ticks at 115.06. You jump over to the 30-year right now, negative by 27 ticks, 129.28 right now. You check out the volatility index. 
just chopping around. Uh, historically above averages, but boy, we had quite a year last year, folks, but last year doesn't happen often. Okay, remember how many times we got surprised by this market in terms of where we, where we were supposed to be, where inflation was supposed to be. The Fed did not even start hiking until March of last year. You had the war going on at the beginning of that, but I back things up to even like the, the end of 2021, the very beginning of 2022, there was still some logic there that inflation was not going to be what it is right now, right? We did not know that in May of 2023, we'd be dealing with a core CPI running at 5.5% as we are 14 months into a Fed hiking cycle that's faster than any of us had anticipated, and banks are going BK that have deposits of hundreds of billions of dollars in them. So that was last year, okay? This year, yes, we can see some surprises, but I'm not sure we're going to see so many spikes to 37, 38. We see the volatility we even had last week, right? Really pair the volatility. But historically, it is important to remember that we are still well above averages, folks. And when you look at a VIX of 17, the rule of VIX at 16 is a 1% move every one out of three days. Well, you're high, priced higher than that. That means you're looking for a 1% move in the market more than one out of every three days. That's still a pretty volatile period. And if you see the slide beginning one way or the other, that's where things can really begin to catch up. Even if you're not getting 1% to 2% rip-roaring moves in either direction, maybe it's a little bit more of a slow bleed to that degree. Okay, we talked a little bit of retail earnings. So we get retail sales tomorrow. And then we do. We get Walmart and Target this week. And then we get, let me get this right, Home Depot on Tuesday. So the one that's next week, I remember there was one, and the one that is next week is, yeah, Lowe's. So usually it's Home Depot and Target and, uh, excuse me, it's usually Home Depot and Lowe's on back-to-back -back days, maybe in Walmart and Target on back-to-back -back days. And in past earnings cycles, I remember that it's been Home Depot and Walmart on the same day, actually. And then Target and Lowe's on the same day. And I was like, how do they do that, right? How do they set that up? Why do they got the number one leaders in the industry there? And Walmart's the leader in retail. Uh, Amazon's close, I guess. But when you're talking about big store retailer, Walmart, Target, Walmart's number one, Target's number two. Home Depot's number one, Lowe's is number two. Nonetheless, Lowe's is next week, but we get Walmart, Target, and Home Depot. Let's check them out right now. We go over to Walmart. Walmart out with their numbers on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, Thursday on the 18th. Let's see when Target is out there. So Target is out on the 17th. So we're going to get Target on Wednesday. Walmart on Thursday. And Home Depot tomorrow. Is that correct? I believe it is. Yes. Yeah, tomorrow morning we get Home Depot. So that really kicks off the retail. We get retail sales tomorrow morning as well. So Home Depot, retail sales, Target on Wednesday, Walmart on Thursday. We also get TJ Maxx on Wednesday. Alibaba reports on Thursday as well. So we get some retail companies. Uh, we jump over to Amazon shares. Amazon. So July 27th. Were they already out? Yeah, they just had their numbers uh, for April 24th. They did. So they're far out there. We've already had those. And we get a little bit of slide in this market going on, man. Not for Amazon, though. It's so interesting how things are moving so differently occasionally right now, right? You got Amazon shares spiking higher. NASDAQ barely in the positive. Dow off by three. Excuse me. Dow off by 93. So we got a little bit of a hit going on, man, in the Dow. What's moving the Dow? Anybody know in the Tiger's Den? What's moving that Dow, man? We got some action. Disney chairs taking it on the chin yesterday, uh, last week, excuse me. Folks, if you're looking at Disney, man, I would be looking at this longer term, okay? You're back to basically the COVID lows. You're chopping around at this area. You did make it down to 79 bucks At the end of last year, you made it down to, what, $84? We're back to 91 You go longer picture on Disney, man. Disney's never going away, and you're basically back to where you were trading in 2014 prices. Pretty wild. Yeah, Boeing down a full percent, trading lower on the open. That's going to hit the Dow. Interesting action. 
Okay, what else do we got pulled up in terms of driving the action this week? Let's talk a little bit of metals. How about a little bit of platinum, right? Platinum demand predicted to surge this year, leaving a near 1 million ounce, ounce deficit. We get down into some platinum. We pull up the chart here. And this is the high that we were at recently. You got a high at 1348 back here in 2021. And you even go a little bit big picture. And you're seeing where we are. If that's the case, why isn't platinum trading higher? I was looking at this this morning. Maybe some den um, tigers or tigresses in the den can help me out. Because to me, that looks like it's basing near the bottom, right? I mean, you got a range between eight, 800 and 1,000. You spiked up to 1,200 during 2021. But you look at some of the spikes we get in this platinum contract, man. If we really have a deficit coming to the turn of a million ounce deficit going on, now, what's so interesting here is that this ties in. I was reading an article as well this morning. Let me see if I can find this one. There's too many good articles reading. Too much good action going on right now. Here we go. This is the article from the journal. How they tie together. The new electric vehicle gold rush. Automakers scramble to get into mining, right? A scarcity of EV battery, battery and materials pushes car companies and miners to work closer together. And for both, there's going to be a learning curve. And, yeah, they need a lot of... Uh, Commodities, folks. Uh, plenty of lithium, plenty of nickel. Um, we'll buy them from the open market. But guess what? Things are changing, folks. GM exec soon came to discover how off the mark those projections were. And they have a 40-person team scouring the globe for these minerals, right? So they're talking about lithium, nickel. Pretty remarkable when you talk about that, man, how things are going to change. And as I mean, that was one of the biggest problems Elon was facing early on, right? He was a battery company, essentially. He wasn't a car company because he needed to make the batteries that they needed to put in the cars. So he built uh, the Gigafactory, et cetera. So we'll see where that plays out. But yeah, and there, there's Tesla. $6.2 billion into lithium-ion battery EV component factory since 2014. So that's going to play out as well as we go forward. Okay, let's talk a little bit of health, because this one got me going, and it's from the journal, all right? We're going to tease this one, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit of chocolate milk, as they're looking at chocolate milk in schools. This one I don't understand, folks. Sugar and added sugar. You got to look at sugar, especially when you're talking about kids. We'll talk a little bit of health when we get back. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets basically flat right now. S&P negative by one, NASDAQ 100 barely in the positive, Dow off by 65, the Russell positive by eight, crew contract bouncing off of the lows of 69.41 last night. You're trading near $71. You get the gold contract up by $3 at 2022. You jump over to the dollar index right now, dollar index 102.48, and we're chalking a little bit of chocolate milk. Uh, so this story out there from the journal, and it's talking about the USDA considering a ban on flavored milk in some school cafeterias. Of course, they got critics. The biggest critics of them all are going to be the uh, dairy industry pushing milk out for sure. And folks, it's all about sugar. All right. And listen, sugars are everywhere. Sugars can be healthy. But I think it's important to put healthy choices in front of children as a child, as a father with a child that's two years old, still drinks milk. I don't think he's ever drank chocolate milk. OK, and he's got treats, man. He's had ice cream. OK, he's had snacks. He had cinnamon rolls with icing yesterday on Mother's Day. OK, but in terms of habits, building habits that are built on sugary chocolate milk just makes zero sense to me whatsoever. I don't understand how politics come into this, man. And if you the one thing I've become hyper aware in my own healthy habits, trying, always doing my best and struggling through uh, and your kids is added sugar. OK, now, yes, you don't want to be plowing through a, a diet full of fat, although fats can be very healthy at times, especially younger kids, babies. That's they need a lot of fat helping their brains to develop. OK, that's why they drink whole milk. That's why they um, their mother's milk, whatever it is, a lot of fat, a lot of good fats in there. Then you have protein, which is an essential building block for muscles, right? Bodybuilders um, in general, if people are working out heavily, protein is a huge factor to be able to grow muscles. And then you have carbohydrates, okay? Sugars are carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are beneficial as well. Sugars are part of a healthy diet. Sugars are in fruits everywhere, but it's the added sugars that go into this. And they are everywhere, folks, okay? That's the most remarkable thing is you start looking at the labels, okay? You look at sugars, look at added sugars the most the best example of that i can give you is in yogurt greek yogurt okay which is very healthy for you a lot of protein a lot of good um, gut enzymes and a brand like chobani they they blew greek yogurt into the country man changed the whole industry created a whole different facet of yogurt in america and i'm sure worldwide as they pushed it as well there is an obscene amount of added sugar in a lot of Chobani yogurts, and I love Chobani. Okay, we have Chobani in the house. It's okay occasionally, all right? But just glancing at some of them, it's not gonna be able to blow up big enough. This is one of the favorite ones we like in our household, man. I like it. Chobani, vanilla, Greek yogurt uh, with mixed berries on the bottom. So you got some fruit in there, right? And I'm telling you, so this happens, right? Now this in particular, per a serving, has 140 calories. You're getting 10 grams of protein, which is great. You're getting a little bit of fat, 2.5 grams of fat, and you're getting 18 grams of sugar, but the kicker is 14 of those grams are added. Just pour it in there. They just take a spoonful of sugar, they just pour in 14 grams of sugar. That's about two teaspoons, I believe, and looking, looking up some of these numbers. Now, they talk about that kids should have something like uh, 
you know, 60 or 46 grams or something like that. No, 25 grams of sugar per day. That's what it is. Yes, children 2 to 18 should have a maximum of 6 teaspoons or 25 grams of sugar a day. Now, the, the kicker in, in this, folks, is that the ingredients, okay, are cultured low-fat milk, which the yogurt comes from, water, and then sugar. And then you get the few fruit puree at the end. Okay, now this is all indicative, folks, of saying that sugar is everywhere. Okay, it is absolutely everywhere, and it's destroying our diets. And this is not a health show, okay? But when I read journal articles, and the one thing I wanted to stress on this, okay, because you go through this article, it's a great article from the journal this morning, talking about the USDA. No idea who this writer is, Christina Peterson, but she brings up some interesting facts here. Now, you have people on both sides, of course. Issues divide parents. You got child nutrition specialists, right? School meal officials. Um, they support restricting flavored milk, saying it has added sugars that contribute to childhood obesity. Obesity is a massive problem in our country. Childhood obesity is where that starts. That's where kids are, are building their palate, okay? Now, others worry that children already have too much sugar in their diets, okay? Uh, I'm trying to get both sides of this as I go through the article here. Because what they talk about here is that, yeah, the dairy industry is trying to ensure that flavored milk remains widely available, of course, okay? 37 school milk processors representing 90% of the school, I mean, it's like this is what we're pitting against the health of our children, okay? 37 school milk processors, and they're trying to acquiesce and to say that they'll provide flavored milk options with no more than 10 grams of added sugar in each eight out. Why even 10? Why are we plowing 10 grams of added sugar? I just told you that 25 is the daily limit for kids 2 to 18. That's the American Academy of Pediatrics. And their, con their, their, their notion that they're going to extend to us, as in Americans with children in schools, is that they'll just have 10 grams in there, okay? Now, the kicker here is that they say if you take away chocolate milk, kids aren't going to drink any milk and they need milk, okay? They have low-fat milk. It has calcium in it for bone building, etc. So there is a reasonable nature to saying there are benefits to milk. You don't have to plow sugar into milk just to make sure the kids get a healthy benefit from it, folks. It's just use your brain, okay? You don't need to plow sugar into milk for the health benefit of a child. That should be so simple, okay? There's protein in there as well. There's not as much protein as you think sometimes in milk, depending on which one you get. Fairlife is a great product. I think they're owned by Coca-Cola. That's what we give Tommy. It's uh, ultra processed. It's got more protein in there. So to get into the nuts and bolts of what I want to leave you with, though, okay, is that under current guidelines, school must serve at least two milk options, one of which must be plain, either fat-free or 1%. Schools may choose to offer either fat-free 1%, but aren't allowed to serve whole or two milk. So they're keeping, actually, the fat milk out, but they're going to plow sugar into it. And if anything, folks, we have a sugar problem in this country, okay? Yeah, we eat fatty foods as well, but the sugar deal is the real deal. Now, here's what they say. They say if you take chocolate milk out, kids don't drink it. One study published in 2019, okay, good old Massachusetts, found that when flavored milk had been removed, kids were less likely to select milk to drink at meals than at other schools where you had chocolate milk or flavored milk available. Just under 57% of children opted for plain milk or 1% milk at schools without flavored, whereas 94% of kids selected milk at schools where they had access to... I mean, should we really be needing all these kids to have sugary milk, right? Now, here's the kicker of this, though. and This is all I'm going to leave you with, all right? because it's important to think about this, is that's one article, but guess what? That's when it changes instantly. That's like the next day when you go to a school, there's no more chocolate milk, you're used to chocolate milk, and the kids say, hey, I've built a habit for chocolate milk. Where's my chocolate milk? I'm not gonna have the plain milk. I want my chocolate milk. Well, guess what? If you let it go for a couple years, guess what happens? Same deal, 2017 study, New England school districts, okay? They remove chocolate milk immediately, just under 52% of students, similar to that 2019 article were taking it, but guess what? Two years later, it was up to 72 again. His kids said, hey, guess what? No chocolate milk. No chocolate milk, folks. You give them chocolate milk occasionally, not every day. We'll come back and talk markets. Stay tuned, folks. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets pulling back right now. You get the S&P off by six points. Nothing too dramatic, but we were up approaching 41.56 in the overnight. And, you know, you look at this market last week, folks, right? No matter which way you're trading it, man, we had rallies of about 1% on six different occasions. You had, whether you were bullish or bearish, you had almost three separate rallies last week on pretty nice technical areas in terms of the upside between about 41.60 and 41.70. This morning, it was a little bit lower. On the downside, you're looking at about, what, 41.22 was a nice area. You made it to 41.11 on Friday. But yeah, um, be careful out there. And yeah, you know, you got to, so back to the markets for a second this week, folks, for a second. Retail sales tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, Home Depot earnings. Wednesday earning, Target Wednesday morning, Target earnings. Thursday morning, Walmart earnings, okay? So Home Depot Tuesday, Target Wednesday, Walmart on Thursday. It's going to be interesting. And the last part of that conversation is talking about chocolate milk. And I, I rushed through the end of it. And just to reiterate there, that's the key, okay, is that you fast forward to things, all right, and kids will adapt. And you're trying to teach them healthy habits. And, of course, if you're providing chocolate milk forever and you take it away, they're not going to want to go to regular milk. 
but you just got to give them those good options, folks. And at school, you got to start it. Now, this is an article out this morning on the, Wa on the Wall Street Journal in the U.S. section. Okay, this isn't some health article, all right? This is right in the front page. And what else is out there in the business section? Talking about America's snack binge shows no sign of slowing. The snackification of U.S. diets has food companies drooling. Now, pair that article with this article saying, is it a good idea that we're not plowing chocolate milk into cafeterias that are flooded with added sugar? It's like, come on, man. It's crazy. The numbers they talk about in this one as well. I'm going to post those both, the, both of these articles into the Tiger's Den, folks. Check it out. And we're going to finish with those YouTube statistics I gave you earlier. This article from the journal four days ago talking about that YouTube, okay, share of U.S. time, TV time by service, YouTube at 7.8%, well above Netflix in just in the last six months going higher. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's out today. Steve Rhodes coming up live at 11 o'clock, live programming all day after that, folks. Fast Market, Larry. 